He makes videos about computers on the internet. On the internet. Timmy Joe PC Tech. PC Tech. Tech reviews. Computer parts. You betcha. What's up, people? My name's Timmy Joe. I make videos about these things we call computers up here on the internet. And uh, today, we have an episode of The State of Tech, which is a show I do whenever I damn well feel like it. And it's usually when I want to have a little bitch session at the current state of technology. And I think that this is uh, granted. Because you know what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about GPUs and the lack of competition in that space and how it just it sucks. And I hope it changes, okay? So yes, it's, this, this is what prompted me. NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti no longer in production. And that was like kind of the saving grace of the RTX launch was it was supposed to drive down the prices of the 1080 Ti. Now, it makes sense that it would go away. And yes, there is always the used market, but this is actually happening. You know, my boy Steve from Gamers Nexus, uh, you know, reported it. So I, I believe it. And the reason actually why I, I really do believe it is because if you look on Newegg, there's four models under $900. And before RTX, and you know, as mining was really ramping down, we saw 750 be a regular, you know, high-end version of the 1080 Ti. And it's just not happening anymore because stock's going to, going to dwindle. It's going to go away. And you know, it, it kind of sucks. I heard that they had like 100,000 GPUs or 300,000 or something that they didn't sell with mining. They obviously weren't 1080 Ti cores. And I believe we won't see like a 2060 or, you know, in, in any lower end cards for a while. They'll probably save those for uh, AMD's launch of some new cards because they got the high end on lock and they have the mid range on lock as long as there's, you know, still 1060s and stuff out there and 1070s. So we'll have to see. But if you're a high end enthusiast and you really want it, the bleeding edge of performance and the ray tracing, because ray tracing just works. What do you go? What kind of prices are you going to talk about? Well, you're paying a minimum of five hundred dollars for a new generation card, and there's no launch date of any lower than that. That's really goddamn ridiculous. It really is sad. Now, granted, there are still you know twenty or ten seventies and ten sixties and what have you for now, but Nvidia really wanted to just be assholes and come out with the best possible g gaming GPU ever. And y yeah, it's nice to see that, but they did things the complete reverse. And it's only because they have every bit of clout in their hand to do whatever they want. So, you know, why wouldn't they put out RTX? And just the whole launch really made me angry. Ray tracing, there's no fucking ray tracing games out there. Like, what, why would they do that to their consumers? In a time where we just got through a goddamn GPU apocalypse. And now you're going to launch mid minimum $500 card for next gen performance and come up with some ray tracing bullshit. Just why couldn't you have catered to the people that made you the gamers out there that wanted a next gen card and wanted something shiny to put in their computer and they don't have 500 American dollars. Like it's ridiculous. And if you want to go up from there, like let's try and find the, the cheapest 2080. It's this one here. Uh, yeah, the, the, this area here, a blower, for 769 769 if you want to get into a 2080 and that's not even the highest one they usually save the 20 you know 80 ti or the the ti series for last but they just launched with it well wait, wait you want one of those then you're goddamn ridiculous you have you must be some sort of millionaire because you're looking at what uh, over a thousand dollars for a 2080 ti let's find them 27 i don't know why those are popping up there yeah uh over twelve hundred dollars that's re fucking ridiculous, man. That's just a slap in the face. And it, had they catered to their lower end consumers, I wouldn't be yelling about it. It's cool that you can send a bunch of review units, like five of them, to all these guys and they can have a competition to see who gets the highest Fire Strike or Time Spy score. But, like, that's just PR and bullshit. No one's buying these unless you're some sort of millionaire. Like you're some kind of millionaire. And it's really kind of sad. So where's AMD been? What is AMD's problem here? Well, AMD's had a few things on the go, especially recently, like this. For the first time, let me show you our Rome 
Second generation Epic processor. Second generation seven nanometer ROM with 64 cores. I, I'm sorry, but if that's what you're doing, okay, cool. But can you please trickle some of this down to the graphics card side of things, please, Lisa Sue? Well, they had another launch uh, of this. World's first seven nanometer GPU. World's first seven nanometer GPU. That sounds exciting. Too bad it's totally for the enterprise space and not at all for us regular consumers. Now, this is a sign of things. If they're in production, uh, you know, making seven nanometer parts, then yes, we might see some soon. But none of this is, you know, talking consumer. And I worry about the consumer because it seems like they made their money in mining and they're not really worried about gaming. Especially because we see, you know, their roadmap says that Navi was supposed to be out this year and it's not. Now there are plans, you know, AMD CP is CEO, <laughs> Lisa Su hosts 20 C 2019 CES keynote on seven nanometer CPUs and GPUs, but who knows? Maybe that'll just be some demo. And I bet it'll focus on seven nanometer Ryzen CPUs over graphics cards. And if we see any graphics card performance, is it gonna be like Vega where at CES we saw a bunch of Doom demos that were doomed? You know, that kind of worries me. You know, are we gonna even see this before summer 2019? I really want a new card. I really want to, you know, them to do what they did with Ryzen against Intel against Nvidia. That would be so sick. So let's hope that this CES thing actually happens and is, you know, pointing, you know, the direction of, you know, let's go at least a sue in your graphics card department. But I'm worried because then you see stuff like this. This is a rumored launch of a RX 590 12 nanometer update to this. And if I scroll down and look at, oh, well, it's, it looks like it's got about 8% better performance than an RX 580. And uh, what's the, I think there's specs here. Yeah, uh, Polaris 30 is going to have a 12 nanometer FinFET design, but the exact same stream processors and RAM and everything. So why are they launching that? Well, why? That's all, that's the best you can come up with right now? It's worrying me. Now, sure, they've got to fill a lower end space and maybe this is just part of that, but we've seen this before with, you know, 480 to 580. And, uh, you know, then they did all this weird stuff with X models of them that were only in um, Dell computers and stuff like that. So let's really hope that this isn't a sign of things to come because this, I don't want to see an RX 590 unless it's got some real good performance increases. Like if you put it in the level of a 1070, that would be cool. But why not call it something completely different if it's going to be that good? You know, obviously it's not going to be. So uh, that leaves us with what I'd really like to see from AMD. Because I'm going to show you some benchmarks here that kind of show where they are at in comparison to uh, uh, NVIDIA and the high-end GPU space. And it's leaving me worried. So an RX 580 overclocked to the gills gets over 15,000 graphics score in Firestrike. Okay, and this was a awesome, awesome, successful card in my opinion. Not just because miners bought them up like crazy, but it's a legitimately good graphics card and it launched out at a legitimately good price. And yes, there were a lot of factors that makes that laughable. You know, $500 uh, RX 580s because of mining. That's, that's really goddamn ridiculous. But, um, you know, they, they, with the initial thought behind this, I thought it was really good. It was a $200 or $240 VR-ready gaming GPU. And like that, that's an awesome prospect, bringing something out that caters to your masses. And that's what I hope AMD is working on. And I'm worried that they're not. So, uh, you know, if we see it gets over 15,000 in uh, the uh, graphic score, a fire strike. Well, where does it need to be to be acceptable by my standards? Well, we see here with the Fury, this is all, you know, graf uh, cards that I benchmark personally. So these come right from my fire strike account uh, or my 3D Mark account. And uh, Fury came out a while ago. Now, this is just a Fury. I think it was a Strix version. So it's not a Fury X, but it was, uh, you know, 17,000. So let's say Fury X might be 18,000, 1850. And that's like, you know, those are obsolete by now because they only have four gigs of HVM2. Uh, you know, so this, the score doesn't mean much. But they were able to achieve 18,000 on their high-end GPUs, like, what, four years ago almost? Uh, like three at least? 
well, how, how come you haven't been able to get your mainstream performance to that level? You know, well, you have Vega. Well, let's look at Vega. They, you know, the, the high-end Vega 64 overclocks getting 22, maybe 23,000 graphics score in uh, Fire Strike. This is, I think, with a yeah, Ryzen 1700. So it'd probably be a little bit higher than that if it was running on an Intel system. But like, th this is not promising at all because the RTX cards, you know, the the 1070 starts there. I don't have one to test, obviously, but. Where, where, what I'm getting at is we need like this level of performance for $400. We need our, Vega's performance in Navi for $400. And that would be so awesome. And let's say it ran cool and you know, you didn't have a blower model come out first and there was actually stock on them. That would blow my mind. That's what I'm trying to get at. So we see even a 1070, that's not, that's like the third, fourth best card last generation if you count Titan. And, you know, it was already getting Vega 64 performance. So I NVIDIA can do whatever the fuck they want right now because it's just so, they're so far ahead. And I'm really hoping that AMD is doing something nice for us. It would be so good. And I beg with you, Lisa Sue, please make this happen. Okay, go to CES, show us some decent uh, performance, but don't lie about it. Don't pretend like it's a competitor for the 2080 Ti. Go low, do this again, because this is what we need right now. We need, uh, you know, a Navi, whatever. I don't know what they're going to call it, but a Navi uh, R X R12. I don't even know what you'd call it, but that uh, has Vegas 64 level performance for like four hundred and fifty dollars retail or less, and maybe some smaller models that are like Vega 56 or whatever or, you know, GTX 1070, and, you know, have them all under $500, and have stock available, like you did with this. There was a little bit of a rough launch with the, the 480, but in my opinion, it was a pretty good success. Mining wasn't really uh, making a big deal yet, and at the launch of those, $200 for VR was how they advertised it. Make it $400 for high-end performance, and have the stock available. So. I know it's going to be a while, but let's say you even have to wait until summer 2019. Have something juicy for your core audience to sink their teeth into. And let's hope and pray that mining doesn't come back. But a sub $400 GTX 1080 GT or RTX 2070 competitor would be so awesome that you could sell a million of them and people would just eat them up and it would put faith back in AMD. You know, and we know you can do it. Leave HBM out of there. Put some regular RAM on it. Make it some fast RAM. Produce them. Make sure partner cards are available on day one. And make 7 nanometer Navi not the high end, not the 2080 Ti competitor, but the GPU for the masses with a high end performance. And I think that's where you could really, you know, go. And I, I'll sit here and I'll pray. Dear Lisa Sue, would you please bring out the 7 nanometer and make it affordable? That's what I'm going to do. So I hope that you like this video where I just kind of bitched about the state of things. But this affects me directly because I don't get sent graphics cards from companies because my channel isn't big enough. So I think about, well, can I buy a 2080 Ti or even a 2080 or even a 2070 for a decent price so I can have the, the, you know, the equipment to benchmark things properly on my channel? And right now the answer is no. And Intel does the same thing. My, fav my favorite thing is Ryzen 2700X or even 2700. It is so affordable for uh, getting into an eight core high, you know, like high end processor that you can do high refresh rates with, that you can video edit with and all this stuff. If we had the equivalent of the Ryzen 2700 in the graphics card space, I think AMD would just, they, they, no one would ever come back from that. NVIDIA would have to slash their prices. It would make for an awesome time all around for everybody. And that's where we're getting at. This has been the State of Tech with Timmy Joe. AMD, please make some good GPUs. If you agree with me, I have a comment section below where you can talk about things and stuff and whatever. Uh, I also have a Patreon. If you like the kind of stuff I do, I'd really enjoy it if you could, you know, go in the links in the description, go to Patreon, throw me your couple coffee bucks, 
every month. It will help the channel. It'll help me maybe someday get an RTX 2070 or something. That would be nice. But, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to move on. I got 9th Gen uh, Core Series Part coming soon so I can plug it into this motherboard and have fun. And, spoiler alert, it's not an 8 Core. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll do a little bit of whatever, and uh, I got two of these right now. There's one in my system here, there's one right here, so that system will feature Crossfire. So maybe we can get GTX 1070, 1080 performance out of AMD without going with Vega. Also, Vega's actually getting kind of cheap, so maybe we'll revisit that soon too. But I'm at watching me join Scram and Twitter. I just hope that the graphics card situation changes, and it happens before mining goes sky high again. Because that would just make me the saddest ever. I'll see you guys in another video. All I want to do is game 4K affordably. Bye-bye.